So today I'm taking a closer look at one of my favorite Italian dishes, spaghetti carbonara. And there are so many ways of making carbonara and some of them includes using thick cut bacon. That's usually the American version, but there are also like other origin stories behind the carbonara that refutes that and says that it actually is a version of an authentic Italian one. Let's look at that later. The other version is my favorite kind with pancetta. And uh, just let me know any Italians down there if that's the right way of saying it, but that's my attempt. And well, pancetta is relatively easy to find where I live. The more authentic version of a carbonara uses guanciale, which is made from the pork jowl. And it's just much more fattier, saltier, and the way that it renders the fat and the type of fat that's in that cut of meat or bacon is um, something that adds a lot of flavor to a carbonara. Unfortunately, it's hard for me to get that anywhere close to me. So pancetta it is. But the idea behind this video is to kind of take a look at if you're using thick cut bacon versus pancetta, then what are you missing out on? And can you make an authentic version of a carbonara by not using guanciale? Another thing about guanciale is it's kind of expensive uh, per pound compared to pancetta or bacon. So that just is another factor behind people preferring to use bacon or pancetta. Now what I've learned so far is there are three leading theories behind the origins of a carbonara. And the first one is the Roman tradition theory where basically uh, it's said that the dish comes from ancient Roman origins and it evolved from a simple pasta preparation made with just cheese. And then eventually people started adding in pecorino romano and uh, bacon and guanciale. But then the American influence theory is that at the end of World War II, Americans would drop crates full of bacon and egg in Italy. And that's what the locals used to create carbonara. The third theory that I learned about is the Italian culinary innovation, where basically historians propose that carbonara is a result of innovation within Italy in the culinary world. And that this dish came about by adapting to what's locally available and fresh within the region. Regardless of what you think is the more true version of the origin, this dish is to die for. But what's a big no-no is adding cream and parsley and any other green. Peas, I'm okay with, because I kind of had my first carbonara with peas when I had it at a restaurant. I'm not adding it today. Now both pancetta and bacon are made from the belly of the pork. And the actual flavor is quite different from pancetta to bacon. Bacon is always, and most usually, smoked. And that smoky flavor always goes into the dish, which is what people enjoy about bacon. Pancetta does not have that. It's a much milder flavor, and if you just smell it, it just smells more oinky, more, more porky, I feel, than bacon. Also, thick cut bacon does taste, uh, in texture, a bit meatier than, than pork, than pancetta, because pancetta has like a more uniform texture, where um, the level of fat to meat is kind of one to one. Now, regardless if you're using bacon or pancetta, they both need to start on a cold pan. So let's start rendering that fat out because we want the fat to render out slowly. Now, the cheese is also something that differs from personal preference to those who want something more traditional. Traditionally, Pecorino Romano is what is always used in carbonara, but I am just always partial to Parmigiano Reggiano. Maybe like a ratio would work for me, like half Pecorino, half Parmesan, but I'm just using full Parmesan today, but just do what fits you best. And what my regular recipe does have one egg and about a half cup of cheese. I'm gonna change that a little bit just for this. I'm gonna add an egg, but also an egg yolk for some extra richness. 
I'm gonna add a bit extra cheese, about three quarters of a cup packed. So the key part to focus on is the bacon, so pancetta, guanciale, or bacon, if that's what you're using, eggs, cheese, and the pasta. And garlic is something that, what well, is a part of Italian cuisine and it really does wonders. Some people do say that garlic ruins the flavors that are supposed to make a traditional carbonara, but Garlic in anything just improves it for me, so... A quick little swim in the bacon and pancetta fat is enough to get that garlic flavor in that carbonara. And then it's just a matter of timing your pasta to be done perfectly so that you can mix it all in. Always add a bit of water. I'm gonna add that to both these pans so that there's some excess moisture so we can make a nice sauce with our egg and cheese mixture and we are coming up to the final taste test to really see if the pancetta does push the carbonara over the edge compared to the bacon and which one is actually better carefully mix it after you've let that pan rest for a little bit let that temperature come down a little bit that always guarantees that your eggs get cooked and not curdle in a pan that's straight off the heat and always mix in the eggs off of the heat and you will get this amazing cheesy creamy sauce now i'm really happy with how both of these are looking and if you're looking for presentation tips get a carving fork like this and it just always elevates how the dish looks but that doesn't matter right now it's about how it tastes. And honestly, I think if you love bacon and you eat lots and lots of bacon, then the bacon version will just feel more familiar to you. So you might just prefer the bacon. But like when it came to the pancetta version, there's a subtle bit of like natural sweetness within the actual meat. It's crispy. It's like there's more volume in it. Um, and I feel like the flavor of the pancetta is throughout the actual dish, throughout the noodles, the sauce, is incorporated well into it. While for the bacon version, it tastes to me more like spaghetti and cheese and bacon. It didn't combine and it wasn't as cohesive as the pancetta version. So I would just say, try it, try both. And if you like the bacon version more, who cares? That's what you like, you should enjoy that. If you want to go complete 100% traditional, get guanciale, have pancetta, and it really falls down to what you want. But I think for me, the pancetta version was a clear winner just because it imparted that flavor throughout the dish and just really made it unique. Eventually, I'm gonna do a guanciale version, but let me know what else you want me to make with that cut of pork. I'll see you on the next one. See ya.